How much time can I spend in the U.S. without having to pay taxes? This is a question I get quite a bit from my high net worth clients because many high net worth clients spend a significant amount of time in the U.S. either on business or because they have a vacation home there or a combination of both. And this is something that they're rightfully concerned about. Becoming a U.S. resident means not only paying taxes on your worldwide income, but having to comply with uber complex international tax rules and complex foreign reporting. Non-resident aliens who are, are those that are not U.S. citizens, green card holders, or residents only pay taxes on U.S. source income, whereas U.S. tax residents, so citizens, green card holders, and those who are residents pay tax on their worldwide income. Now, you can become a U.S. tax resident simply by spending too much time there. And the test for determining whether or not you're a U.S. tax resident if you're not a green card holder and not a citizen is called the substantial presence. Test. To determine whether or not you meet the substantial presence test, you first have to add up all the days that you've spent in the U.S. in the current year. Then you have to add up a third of the days from the year before that and a sixth of the days for the year before that. If that total number equals 183 or more, guess what? You're a U.S. tax resident and you're liable for U.S. taxes on your worldwide income. You have to comply with all the U.S. tax reporting rules and pay tax on your worldwide income. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, subscribe to our email list and follow me on LinkedIn. Links below. Now, the good news is there's an exception to this substantial presence test, and it's known as the closer connection exception. If you've spent less than 183 days in the United States, let's say you meet the substantial presence test, right? So using this calculation that we just went through, you've spent more than 183 days in the last three years using the calculation we went through, but you have not spent 183 days or more in the current year, then you may be able to claim the closer connection exception but you have to show that, that your tax home was in a foreign country, that you had a closer connection to that foreign country, and then you must file Form 8840, Closer Connection Exception Statement for Aliens with a federal tax return to claim this closer connection exemption. Now, there's a lot of questions on Form 8840 that you have to go through in order to prove that you had a closer connection to this foreign country than the United States. So, for example, you're going to have to provide your residence address. You're going to have to show that you had bank accounts in this foreign country, a driver's license, credit card, social security card, voter registration, family ties, business ties, basically anything that shows that your connection to that foreign country was closer than it was to the United States. If you meet those criteria, then you qualify for the closer connection exception. But one of the things that you have to remember is that the IRS has the ultimate authority on whether or not you qualify. Even if based on the form, based on your tax advisor's determination, you qualify, the IRS can say you don't qualify. I personally have not seen that happen, but I know the possibility exists. There's one last chance for escaping U.S. tax hell. Let's say, for example, you meet the substantial presence test, you don't qualify for the closer connection exception, you may qualify as a resident of another country if you qualify for what's known as the treaty tiebreaker provisions of a tax treaty between the United States and the other country in which you're a resident. The U.S. tax treaties contain this provision called a treaty tiebreaker. And there's basically a series of tests that you go through to try to determine whether you are a resident of the United States or this foreign country. The good news about the treaty tiebreaker is it can get you out of paying taxes in the United States. The bad news about the treaty tiebreaker is you're still going to have to file a U.S. tax return. You're still going to have to report your, your worldwide income and assets to the IRS as if you were a resident. You're just not going to have to pay the taxes. If you need help figuring out whether or not you're a U.S. tax resident and to try to determine if you can utilize the closer connection exception or the treaty tiebreaker, we can help. We've been helping people figure this out for two decades. Just give us a call, shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com or contact us through our website at www.esquiregroup.com. And if you're interested in learning more about what forms you may need to file if you did become a U.S. resident, check out our international tax form filing guide. I'll put a link down in the description. Thank you.